uh, we're going to do a revival Sunday on July 24th. And I'm going to ask Brother Matt uh, now or later uh, to play for us. That would be great, brother. Great job. Let's give him another hand. Let's take our Bibles today as we go. Uh, today, actually, I wanted to uh, have a special message today for Father's Day. I've titled this "The Love of God," um, the love that of uh, the love of God the Father. That is the love of God the Father. And so, as we come to this passage of Scripture, we'll be reading out of Luke chapter 15, verses 11 through 24 this morning. I invite you to follow along in your outline. For those that are watching online, I also invite you to follow along in your Bibles as well. Let's pray as we go to the Word of God. Our gracious and loving Heavenly Father, we thank you for the opportunity to gather together in this day. We thank you, Lord, for just this opportunity that we can talk about the greatest Father of all, and that's God. Help us, Lord, as men and even women of God, to follow your example as you've given us the greatest example of what it means to be a father as well as a parent, as well as a loving God as you are. So I pray that we would follow your example, Lord Jesus, as we talk about these things today in your word. I pray that your word would not return void. Thank you for the time that we've already had in worship. Bless the time as we will be in your word now, as I'm careful to give you the praise and the honor and the glory now. As I ask it in Jesus' name, amen and amen. In Luke chapter 15, it tells us of a parable of the lost son. A parable, by the way, is an earthly situation with a heavenly lesson. Jesus often would speak in parables. He would speak in parables to illustrate what heaven is like using earthly terms. Well, here he tells a story, it's known as the parable of the lost son, or the prodigal son, if you will. But it also gives us a real picture of the heart of God. It gives us the heart of, the, of our Father in Heaven. You know, as we think about our Father in Heaven, you might not have had a good Father here on Earth. Let's be real. You might have not had a good parent relationship with your mom or dad. You might have. Praise God if you did. But if you did not, I want you to know you have a heavenly father that cares for you. He's an Abba father. Abba means he's a father to the fatherless. We have a God in heaven that loves you, that loves you intently and intentionally. And His grace and love is going to be seen in the passage that we're going to look at today. So let's read in our first point, God the Father is giving. In Luke chapter 15, we pick up in verse 11. And it says here, Then He said, A certain man had two sons. And the younger of them said to his father, Father, Give me the portion of goods that falls to me. So he divided them his livelihood. And many days after, the younger son gathered all together, journeyed to a far country, and there he wasted his possessions with prodigal living. And the Bible says in verse 14, But when he had spent all, there arose a severe famine in the land, and he began to be in want. Then he went out and joined himself to a citizen of that country, and he sent him into the fields to feed swine. And he would have gladly had his field to be stomached with the pods that the swine ate, and no one gave him anything. Here is a story of the prodigal son, the lost son, if you will. He had it so good at home with his father. He was one of his father's servants. But one day he got fed up and he says, you know what? I want my inheritance now. Kind of sounds like some immature, you know, young people today. I want it now. I want it now, they might say. But you know what? This 
prodigal son, he wanted his, his inheritance now. Usually you don't get an inheritance until somebody passes away, right? Usually an inheritance comes after maybe a will or something is made, and then, it, then it's allotted to the family members. Well, you know what? He wanted his allotment. He wanted his stuff now during life. It, it, he wanted the inheritance now. And you know what? That's why I've titled this first point, God the Father is Giving. Because in reality, this son didn't deserve the things that the Father gave him. But the Father gave him his inheritance. The Father gave him. and But you know what? He took his inheritance and he went out and he wasted it away. He squandered it. And I'm sure he had some good friends that popped up. <laughs> You know, when he had all the things that he could have, I'm sure he had everybody around him. Oh, I'm your best friend. But when he lost it all, guess how many people were around? Just him and the pigs. It literally says here that he literally went and joined himself, verse 15, and joined himself to a citizen of that country, and he sent him into the fields to feed swine. He lost it all, where he was literally feeding the pigs and eating the pods of pigs. And verse 16, and he would have gladly filled his stomach with the pods that the swine ate, and no one gave him anything. So he got his inheritance, his father gave him. And he goes out and he wastes it away. See what sin does? The devil also, you know, promises so much to people, doesn't he? But the devil is a liar. And the devil is a deceiver. And the devil wants you to be destroyed. So he'll give you whatever he can to get you away from God. Isn't that interesting? People say, if I win the lottery, I'll be happy, right? But is, it, is that always the case? How many people take their lives that are rich today? Or allow drugs to control their whole life and they squander their life away. I'm not saying it's a sad, uh, bad thing to be rich, but when possessions have you, then there's a problem. And here, this prodigal son, he wanted his inheritance now and he goes out and he just wastes it away. That's what sin does. The Bible says in Romans 6.23, the wages of sin is death. But the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ. Lord. There's a price to sin. There's a price and a consequence to our actions, whether good or bad. In this case, the prodigal son, he went out and he wasted away the things that his father gave him. But it, it also shows us a picture of God because God is a giving God. God is a, the, you can't outgive God. Think about what he's given you. Think about what he's done for you. Think about what he's provided for you. God is so good, isn't he? He's given you the breath that you, you breathe in your nostrils right now. He's, he's given you the heartbeat that you're having right now. You know what's amazing to me? When you fall asleep at night, God keeps your heart beating. God keeps your breath going. He's the one that gives everything that we have. If you have shelter, God has given that to you. If you have food, God has given that to you. If you have health, God has given that to you. And by the way, if you're going through hardship, you have God in the midst of that too. He's given you so much. He's a good God. He's a giving God. There's, we can never outgive God. He is a good God. But as we look at this story, we see that God in His riches and His mercy gave this prodigal son what He asked for. But you know what? God in His mercy and His grace has given us His Son today. I heard a true story in the 1930s of a father that took his son to work one day. And as he worked on the dock, he worked in one of those ship places where you know, the ships would come in and the bridge would have to come up to let the ships go by. And the bridge would have to go down for the trains to pass over. And he brought his son, Joey, to work one day in the 1930s. And he, would, he took him to work and he, he would say, Son, 
These are the ships that have come through here. These are the trains that have gone over this track. And he just went over everything. And at this time, the bridge was up. And the father says, you know what, son? Don't be alarmed. i got to go to the office. I forgot something. I'll be right back. So he starts to walk up the stairs, and he grabs the door, and he's opening it. And he looked out, and he heard a train coming. And it was a train that was scheduled at that moment to come. And just as he was about to press the lever to make that bridge come down, he looked out to his horror dismay. His son, Joey, tried to follow Dad to the bridge conductor's office. And his son got stuck under the bridge. He had a choice to make. Does he press the, the button which would cause the lever to come down? There's 300 people on this train. And they will perish unless that button is pressed because there's no way to tell them to stop. The father began to weep and to cry because he knew there was nothing else that he could do. He knew there was no other way that those people could not be saved. He pressed the lever. He pressed the button. And his eight-year-old son, his only son, was crushed under that bridge that day. And he actually noted in his journal, the father noted, that as that train began to cross, and he was looking into the window panes, people were reading a newspaper. People were looking at their watch. Families were talking, not recognizing the sacrifice and the gift that was given for them just to live. <laughs> God has given us a gift of his son. And the Bible says he was crushed for our sins. He was bruised for us. And you know what? That's a real story that I just told you. But God sending his son is just as real. Because he gave his son. Here, he gave the inheritance to this prodigal son. But recognize the giving of God in your life today. Think about how God has been so good to you. And he hasn't forgot about you. I want to just say that. Other people might forget about you. But God won't forget about you. Remember that. And so our second point. We see that God is a forgiving God. He's not only a giving God. But he's a forgiving God. Let me just ask you, what type of world would we have without forgiveness? What type of relationships would we have without forgiveness? What kind of marriages would we have without forgiveness? What kind of freeways would we have without forgiveness? Forgiveness is very, very important, isn't it? Right here we see the forgiving heart of God in this passage of Scripture. The Bible says, as we look at our second point, Luke chapter 15, verse 17. And when he had came to himself, who's him? The prodigal son. Remember, he's wasted his life. He's wasted his, his inheritance. He's coming to his senses now. There's a price to set, but he's coming to his senses. Verse 17 says, but when he had came to himself, he said, how many of my father's hired servants have bread enough and to spare? And I perish with hunger. The Bible says in verse 18, I will rise, the young man says, the prodigal son, and I will go to my father and I will say to him, Father, I have sinned against heaven and before you. I am no longer worthy to be, worthy to be called your son. Make me like one of your hired servants. And when he arose, the Bible says in verse 20, and came to his father, but when he was still a great way off, his father saw him and had compassion. Thank you, Lord. And the Bible says, and ran and fell on his neck and kissed him. And the son said, Father, I have sinned against heaven and in your sight and am no longer to be called your son. This is a picture of God's forgiveness. This father could have turned his back from his son. 
as many do today in this culture. Let me just say this. Men of God, we need to step up in this culture. Women of God, the same. The men of God, we need to step up in our home. We need to step up in our children's life. And if, they, if our children are not in our home, they still are our kids. No matter how old they get, they need God and they need our influence. Look at the world today of how broken it is without a father and a mother influence. But here is a picture of God's forgiveness because his son comes to himself and he comes to his senses. And he says, I need to go back home. I need to get right. I need to get right with, with my father. And I love the picture here because he says, I'm going to go and I'm going to say, Father, I've sinned against heaven and I've sinned against you. But I love the picture. It says here, as a father saw him from afar, his father ran to him and embraced him. Look at this. Look at the setting here. In those days, fathers would wear a long robe. So for him, to, his father, to run to the son, he would literally have to lift up his robe which is very humbling in those days, to run to his son and embrace his son. And that's what he kissed him on his neck. And he said, welcome home. That's a picture of God and his forgiveness. When you come to your senses, when I come to my senses and say, God, I'm sorry for my sins. God, I repent. God, I want to get right with you. God runs to us. He says, welcome home. I forgive you. As far as the east goes to the west, I remember your sin no more. First John 1 John 1.9, the Bible says, if we confess our sins, God is faithful and just to forgive us and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. That's the heart of God. He can forgive you no matter what you've done. But you need to repent. You need to get right. Just like this prodigal son did. And you need to turn from your sins and forsake them. And say, God, I don't want to do that anymore. I don't want to, I don't want to sin against you anymore. And God will forgive you. He'll make you right with him. But if you don't, it's going to just get tough. The Bible says in uh, Proverbs 28, 13. The Bible says... He who covers his sins will not prosper, but whoever confesses and forsakes him will find mercy. That's what the Bible says. God is a God of mercy. God is a God of grace. God is a God of forgiveness. And let me just say, church, let me say, believers watching online or here, forgiven people should be forgiving people. As we've been forgiven by God, we ought to forgive others. If you have your Bible, turn with me to Ephesians. Ephesians chapter 4, verse 31 and 32. If you're taking notes, write this down in your outline. Talking about God's forgiveness. We're going to come back to Luke, so hold that in your Bible there. But in Ephesians chapter 4, verse 31 and 32, Paul says, Let all bitterness and wrath and anger and clamor and evil speaking be put away from you with all malice. And be kind to one another, tender-hearted, forgiving one another, just as God in Christ has forgiven you. Did you hear that, church? As God has forgiven us, we ought to forgive others. As God has loved us, we need to love others the same. John 13, 34, 35, Jesus said, The love that you give, as he's loved us, we're to love others. And this love will prove to the world that we're his disciples if we have a love for one another. Let's be like God. Let's be like his heart. Let's act like him. Let's love like him. Let's forgive like him. We see the compassion of God in this Luke 15 passage where the son is coming home. And he says, I'm sorry for the things that I've done. But his father ran to him, embraced him, and kissed him. That's the heart of God. That is the heart of God. Let us be the same in our hearts toward God. Lord, I want to be this way toward others. I want to love my neighbor as myself. I want to love God with all my heart, soul, mind, and strength. I want to do what you want me to do. 
Isaiah chapter 1, verse 18, the Bible says, Come now, let us reason, says the Lord. Though your sins are like scarlet, they can be white as snow. And though they are red like crimson, they shall be white as wool. God can forgive you no matter what you've done. God can wipe away your sins no matter what you've done. By the way, the devil will try to remind you of what you've done. And your friends, so-called, will try to remind you of what you've done. But you remind them and you remind the devil that Jesus has forgiven you. And you're not, no longer held by those sins. You're held by Jesus. Amen? Amen? Because if you're held by those sins, you're just going to be held by it in chains. You can't move forward. But when you're held by Jesus, He took your son on the cross. And he can forgive you no matter what you've done. And this prodigal son is an example of that. Because he's getting a real picture of God's forgiveness. Again, a parable. An earthly situation with a heavenly lesson. He's literally coming back after taking everything that he had. And he squandered it. He wasted it away. And when he comes home, he says, Father, I'm sorry. And the father runs to him, embraces him, and kisses him. That's the heart of God. There's, there's also judgment involved, isn't there? There's justice. God is a God of justice if you don't repent, if you don't get right. But He's also a God of mercy when you do. Looking at our third point this morning, God the Father is loving and compassionate. God the Father is loving and compassionate. Looking at Luke chapter 15, verse 22 through 24. Luke chapter 15, verse 22 through 24. But the father said to his servants, bring out the best robe and put it on him and put a ring on his hand and sandals on his feet and bring the fatted calf here and kill it and let us eat and be merry. For this son, this for this, my son was dead and is alive again. He was lost and is found and they began to be merry. Uh, again, a picture of the love of God. Let's have a party. My son that was once lost has come home. My son that was once dead is now alive. My son who was once living, wasteful living, is now forgiven and now living in forgiveness. The heart and compassion of God. If you look at the Greek word, in the Bible, and in, in the Hebrew word for compassion, it means to have mercy, to feel sympathy, and to have pity. That's what God has for us, compassion. He has forgiveness for us, too. He has love toward us. By the way, God's love is unconditional. People today might put love on you with conditions. I'll love you if you do this. You ever heard somebody say that? I love you if you do this and this and this. God loves you unconditionally. God loves you unconditionally. And He loves you so unconditionally that He gave His Son. And He says, look, I love you so much, I want you to spend eternity with me. I want to forgive you of your sins. I want you to be right with me. I want you to have all that I have for you, not only here, but in heaven. That's God. That's what He does. And so, God the Father is loving and compassionate. John 3, 16, for God so loved the world, He gave His only begotten Son, that whosoever believes in Him shall not perish, but have everlasting life. The word love in the Greek is agape. Agapeo. It speaks of unconditional love. So when God so loved the world, He loved you unconditionally that He gave His only begotten Son. That whosoever believes in Him shall not perish, but have everlasting life. So we see that the heart of God in this story of the prodigal son. And you know what's amazing too about this story is that the, the father also did not forget about the other son that was being faithful. Let's uh, continue reading uh, in verse 25 and read to the end of verse 32. Now that his older son was in the field and he came and drew near to the house, he heard music and dancing. So he called one of the servants and asked, 
what these things meant. And he said to him, your brother has come home. And because he has received him safe and sound, your father has killed the fatted calf. But, but he was angry, the son was, this other son. And he would not go in. Therefore, his father came out and pleaded with him. See, the father doesn't forget. God the father does not forget anybody. You can be living right with him or those that are not right. He still cares for you too. But he wants you to get right. But here, look at this. Verse 29. So he answered and said to his father, Lo, these many years I have been serving you. I have never transgressed your commandment at any time. And you never gave me a young goat that I might... Be, make merry with my friends. But as soon as a son of yours came who, have, who has devoured your livelihood with harlots, you killed the fatted calf for him. And I love, what, I love what the father says back to him in verse 31. The, the father says to him, Son, you are always with me. And all that I have is yours. He didn't stop his love for his sons, did he? He didn't stop his love for even the prodigal son who fell away and wasted his life away. But he didn't stop his love for the son that was being faithful too. God is a loving God, isn't he? God is a God of grace. And it says here in verse 32, And it was right that we should make merry and be glad, for your brother was dead and is alive again, and it was lost and now is found. When you get saved, before you got saved, you were dead in your sins and trespasses. You were dead, just like this prodigal son. But when you come to Christ and you say, God, forgive me my sins, you come alive. The Holy Spirit comes in and makes you alive spiritually. And Jesus makes you alive, born again, forever. It's a picture of the heart and love and compassion of God. He loves those he sees everything that, of those people, whether his son that was, was not right or the son that was right. But he knew that loving that son that wasn't right, his son would come to his senses. Let me just encourage you. If you have a family member right now that's not saved, don't give up on them. If you have a child, parent that is not saved, do not give up on them. You pray for them. I am the answer to prayer. Of a, of a mother's prayer. I am a pastor today because of a mother's prayer in my life. I was a prodigal son when I was younger. I grew up in the church. But you know what? You can fall away in the, and do the things that the, the world pulls you to. But my mother did not give up on me. And she always says that I always give them over to the Lord. Yes, she did. She did. I was a rascal just like this prodigal son. But you know what? The, the loving heart of God got a hold of me. And I came home. And I remember I was 13 years old. I got down on my knees. And I said, God, I, I knew I accepted you when I was six years old, but I want to get right with you right now. And I've never been the same. From that point on, I said, God, have the control of my life. Please forgive me of my sins. I'm not living for the things that, that you want me to live. And I got right with my Father in heaven, and I've never been the same. And I've been able to serve the Lord since as a pastor. Don't give up on your children. Don't give it up on those that are difficult, too. They're just needing the love of God. They're needing the love from brothers and sisters of God's kingdom. Just that extension of love is big. My mom would just hug me because I had so much hurt inside because of my parents' divorce. She would just hug me and say, I love you. That's the heart of God. Don't give up on God because he hasn't given up on you. Remember that. So we see that God is giving. We see that God is forgiving. And we also see that God is loving and compassionate. A couple of scriptures that come to my mind is Lamentations chapter 3, verse 22 and 23. It says, through the Lord's mercies, we are not consumed. Because of his compassions fall not, fail not. They are new every morning. 
Great is thy faithfulness. God's compassion and mercy is new every day. God's love for you is new every day. One more passage of scripture that came to my heart. Romans 5.8 But God demonstrated his love toward us and while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. I, I'm thankful for the, the prodigal son story because it reminds me of a father in heaven that cares for me and cares for humanity and wants people to be saved, wants people to be forgiven, and wants people to be set free of their sins. You think the father enjoyed seeing his son lose everything? I don't think so. You think the father loves, you think God loves to see people just go through suffering today? That's not God. The world tries to paint it, oh, God's doing all this. Brothers and sisters, we live in a fallen world. Because of Adam and Eve, we have death that is spread to all men. Romans 5 says, for, for all have sinned. So we have suffering today. We have death today. We have hardship today. But you know what? The second Adam, Jesus, through his death, burial, and resurrection, we have life. We have forgiveness. And we have peace with God. And we have eternal life in him. And this life is temporary. But if you know God, you'll be with Jesus and God forever in heaven. Life is so short, but the prodigal son story reveals to us the heart and the compassion of a father. Let's follow his example. Let's follow his heart. Don't give up on God. Don't give up on others. Let me just say this. Some people might not step foot into a church like this. But you might be the opportunity for somebody to see the love of God. You might be the opportunity for somebody to hear the gospel wherever you go. Let's not take that lightly. Let's act, let's react, let's love like God. But let's share the hope that is found in Jesus Christ. The prodigal son's story reveals to us how excited God gets whenever a sinner comes to him. He embraces them and says, you're home. Let's have a party. The Bible says when a sinner repents, the angels in heaven rejoice. I just picture this. Every time I see somebody get saved, there's a party in heaven. Thousands upon thousands of people and angels in heaven are rejoicing. That's amazing. And my prayer is today, if there's anyone here in the room or online that's not saved, my prayer is that you would come to know Jesus. And if you're a prodigal son, prodigal daughter, you need to come back to your father, that you would come back. Come to your senses today and repent. The Bible says, For all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. The Bible says, for God so loved the world, He gave His only begotten Son, that whosoever believes in Him should not perish, but have everlasting life. But we can't forget John 3, 17. For God did not send His Son into the world to condemn the world, but that through Jesus Christ we might be saved. Romans 10, 9 says, If you confess with your mouth that Jesus is Lord, and believe in your heart that God has raised His Son, Jesus, from the dead, you will be saved. James 2.10 says, if you've offended in one point of the law of God, you've offended all of it. That's the bad news. The good news is Jesus saves. Jesus restores. Jesus sets you free from your sins. And Jesus gives you eternal life in Him. And the good news is, if you put your trust in Jesus Christ, you just saw the forgiveness that took place here in this prodigal son story. He did not turn him away. He said, come home. And when he came home, he had a party. And he also restored the older brother. He says, look, he, you're just as important too. I love you. Everything I have is yours. No matter who you are, God says, look, whatever I've done, I've done it for you through my son Jesus. And all that I have is yours. 
The Bible says in Romans 10, 13, for whosoever will call upon the name of the Lord will be saved. Hell is a real place. You don't have to go there. But heaven is also a real place that you can enjoy with God in heaven by putting your faith in Jesus. And I want to invite all of you right now that are not saved, that are not right with God, or a prodigal son to get right with God. Come home. Would you pray with me? Heavenly Father, thank you for this day that you've given to us. Thank you for this story of the prodigal son who got right with his father. It's a picture of how we as sinners can get right with our Heavenly Father. And as you say, come home. You're so giving, Lord God. You're long-suffering. You're, you're forgiving. You're merciful. And you're a God of grace. You also are a God of justice. You will judge sin. But by your mercy and grace, you can forgive us if we will turn from our sins and put our faith in Jesus Christ and repent. So I pray if there's anyone that needs to believe and put their trust in Jesus right now, that they would turn from their sins and believe in Jesus. And just like the prodigal son, as he went home, that they would come home today and say, God, forgive me my sins. I receive Jesus as Lord and Savior. So while our heads bowed, our eyes are closed, and we're praying. If you're here right now and you're not saved, your sins are not forgiven and you're not right with God. The Bible has made it clear of the heart of God here. And if you would like to know God, if you would like to know Jesus right now, put your faith in Christ to save you as Lord and Savior. Would you pray with me right now? And make this your prayer and mean it from your heart and ask God to forgive you of your sins. Again, as I pray, make this your prayer and mean it from your heart. And God, as God will hear from you right now. Heavenly Father, I put my faith in Jesus to save me, to forgive me, and make me a child of God. Thank you for loving me and forgiving me. I turn for my sins. I invite Jesus to save me now. Fill me with the Spirit of God. Fill me with your love. Fill me with your grace. Fill me with your mercy. Help me to walk in your ways. And walk in your word. Thank you for loving me. Forgiving me. As I repent of my sins. And I turn from them now. By the blood that you shed for me on the cross. Forgive me now. And give me eternal life. In Jesus' name I pray. Fill me with the Holy Spirit of God. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Keep your heads bowed, eyes closed. I've already heard those that have been praying. But as the Spirit of God is speaking to hearts and lives, I'm going to ask our follow-up team to hand a card. If you guys can grab those cards, I'd like to just follow up with these that have made decisions today. If you made a commitment to Christ online, would you please write me a post? Write, write us a post. Say, Pastor, I gave my life to Jesus Christ and I got right with God. You can also go to my website, power, the number two, change.org, and write, I gave my life to Jesus Christ. I'll follow up with you. But if you're here right now, I want to invite you. We're going to give you a card. I'm going to ask you to fill this card out. Raise up your hand in the, in the, in the church here. If, you, if you've committed your life to Christ, this is between you and God. But God bless you guys. Two of you. Anybody else? God has spoken to you. God bless you, sir. Amen. Hallelujah. God has spoken to you. Come home. Don't play games with God. Don't play games with your soul. Come home. Today is the day of salvation. I don't have to tell you that tomorrow is not promised. But I can tell you if you get right with God, no matter what happens tomorrow, you'll be ready to stand before Almighty God because of Jesus. Anybody else? Raise up your hand if you prayed to receive Christ or you rededicated your life. God has seen your heart. He knows where you're at. And he's going to run to you right now and embrace you right where you're at. Listen, if you've given your life to Christ, I want to invite you to read the Bible every day, to pray, to get involved here at church. We'd love to see you on Wednesday nights. We'd love to see you here on Sunday mornings. But I also want to invite you to go to my evangelistic website at power2change.org power the number 2 change.org and you can I have 24 discipleship videos to help you to follow Jesus on my website there 
But listen, I'm welcome. Praise God. There's a, there's a party in heaven going on right now for those that have gotten right with God today. And again, yeah, let's give God the glory. He's worthy to be praised. And if you've given your life to Jesus Christ online, I want you to call me right now at 1-800-973-5543. That's my ministry number online. But call me and I'll follow up with you. 1-800-973-5543. Father, thank you for those that have given their life to Jesus Christ. Thank you, Father, that lives are being saved and transformed by God. Help them to grow and grow deeper with Jesus and to turn from sin and turn to Christ every day. Thank you, Father, that you have saved us and forgiven us for eternity. We, we glorify your name, Jesus, as the angels in heaven rejoice. Help those that are online and those here to follow Jesus and all of us to follow after our master and savior, Jesus Christ. We love you. We thank you for loving us and glorify your name now in this time of invitation. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Listen, friends, I need your financial support and your gifts to help me to take the gospel around the world as I'm reaching millions of people on television as well as social media. If you would feel so led by the Lord, would you please go to my website, Power, the number two, Change. Look at the address on the screen, powertochange.org, and click the Donate button. You can give toward Power to Change Crusades monthly to help us to take the gospel as I'm reaching people locally and internationally around the world. Many are coming to know Jesus daily and weekly, and I'm so excited as many are being reached with the gospel. If you would prefer to write, by mail, you can do so. Look at the address on the screen. Power to Change Crusades, Post Office Box 33901, Granada Hills, California, zip code 91344. If you like, you can also call me, and I'll be glad to send you my newsletter. 1-800-973-5543. You can leave your name and your mailing address. I'll be glad to send you my newsletter. Thank you so much for watching. God bless you and keep you. Let's pray. Father, thank you that you've made it possible that we can know Jesus and have a relationship with God through your son, Jesus Christ. Jesus, you said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. Help us to grow deeper and deeper in our relationship with God, to pray, to read the word of God, to be in fellowship with God and his people, to go to church, to follow the Lord in obedience and even get baptized if we haven't been baptized before. I commit this time to you, the rest of our day to you, our year to you, if you allow us to have that. And I just pray that you be glorified and exalted and magnified and praised as I give you the praise and honor and glory in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. Listen, before I go, if you'd like more information on how to grow in your relationship with Jesus Christ, go to my website. Again, power, the number two, change, dot O-R-G. And you can click the link, Learn to Follow Jesus. I have 22 videos on there to help you in your relationship with Jesus Christ. Thank you so much for watching. Thank you for your support. Thank you for your prayers. Thank you for your love. I'm praying for you as well and your family. God bless you and keep you. And may the grace of our Lord Jesus shine upon you like never before. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen and amen. God bless you.